thank God for uh, keeping us. Uh, thank you for uh, being willing to press your way uh, through uh, the cold and the rain again. And I know I sound like a broken record and somewhat uh, redundant in what I say, but I am just really thankful to God for you all and for the Lord just keeping us. Uh, uh, though, uh, as I stand here today, again, my heart is sad, but I, I give God praise because God is still good. Amen. 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 And in the midst of all things, uh, God is still worthy to be praised. Yes, God. And so, and so even in the midst of dealing with what we deal with, we, we just have to continue to press on in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I thank God today uh, for the inspired messages. And I thank you all for coming to hear the word of the Lord on today. Thank you for uh, the Bible study uh, teaching. And um, um, I think that uh, we'll... We talk on Wednesday night probably about Job's friends as God is continuing to inspire us to care for each other. Amen. So this morning I want to invite your attention to the division of Psalm and look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18. And I want to lift one verse. I want to lift verse number 29. Psalm 18, verse number 29 you would turn there with us and we'll be reading from the new king james version and while you're turning there thank you to the uh, uh to the men and the women who uh, continue to uh, support the ministry by uh, standing with us in the elements and recording and playing setting up and all of those things that you do. Thank you. God bless you as well. Again, as I said, thank you to all those who continue to support. And let me thank those who who listening to our broadcast. I was blessed on uh, yesterday when I came out here and I called a gentleman and he, he tells me, he said, every Sunday, uh, Pastor, I listen to your message. I said, how do you see it? He said, uh, I see it on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, and he was uh, expressing his gratitude for the word of God. So thank God for a broader audience where we have an opportunity to share the word of God. Psalm 18, verse number 29, the psalmist says, For by you I can run against the troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. This morning I want to uh, talk from this subject by God's help. By God's help. One of the worst feelings we experience is the feeling of being alone. When Adam was alone, the Lord said, that it's not good that man should be alone. Though Adam was in a God-appointed place, though Adam was surrounded by God's vast creation, it still was not good for Adam to be alone. The Bible teaches us that it is not good for us to be alone, and it gives us examples of what can happen when people are alone? In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, the writer here shares insight into the importance of having companionship along this journey. Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 through 12, the writer said two are better than one. For they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the writer said, the one will lift up his companion. 
But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. In verse 11, he said again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12, he said that though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You see, the teachings in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 simply shows us what is possible. And it also shows us what is impossible. When we are alone and when we have companionship. You see, the, cent the central message of companionship is the help that is available by having someone with us. When Elijah was alone in the wilderness, Elijah wanted to die. When Judas was alone, Judas hanged himself. Being alone make us makes us susceptible to thoughts, to circumstances, to feelings that can be unhelpful. When God said in Genesis chapter 2 that it was not good that man should be alone, he knew things about Adam that the scripture does not reveal. You see, I believe that as Adam looked at the animals in the animal kingdom, Adam was thinking about the companionship that animals had, but he had no companion for himself. So, so God, in his infinite wisdom, when God created humankind, God created us as social beings. Being created in this fashion, it means that like Adam, we are subject to, to feelings of loneliness when we're by ourselves. So to remedy the situation that Adam was in, God created Eve. Now God created Eve for a number of reasons. One reason God created Eve was to provide help for Adam. And we need to understand the dynamics of the relationship between Adam and Eve. You see, Eve was to help Adam, but Adam was to also help Eve. Now, we shouldn't get that wrong to feel that God created Eve just to help Adam. There was a mutual partnership where Adam and Eve, they needed each other. And in a relationship, we need to understand that in relationship, we need each other. And so when God created them, this dynamic, it unfolded. You see, because God understood that there were some things that man couldn't do by himself. And there were things that Adam couldn't do by himself. There were things that Eve could not do by herself. And so both men and women, we need to understand, as well as all humankind, that there are some things we can't do by ourselves. All of us need help. The help we need in this life is not limited to help that we receive from humankind or help that we can give each other. We also need help from the Lord. I appreciate all of the people who have helped me along the way. I appreciate the help that I receive even now. I appreciate and I thank God when I pray. I thank God for the help that 
people give me even when they pray for me. But I also realize that I need help from the Lord. You see, God, he is with us. He said that he would never leave us, neither will he forsake us. One of the reasons God is with us, he is with us to help us. You see, God does not want us to be alone as it relates to his company because God knows we need his help. Just as Adam couldn't do certain things without the help of Eve and Eve could not do certain things without the help of Adam, we can't do certain things without the help of the Lord. David realizes this as he composes the words found in Psalm 18. Now the heading over this psalm, as it is written in the New King James Version, it says this. This is the way it is titled, To the Chief Musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this psalm, on the day the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Before I read this psalm and I saw the caption, the heading over Psalm 18, these words literally gave me some encouragement. The caption over this psalm, the heading over this psalm should be a source of encouragement for all those who seek deliverance. Notice what the scholars said about this psalm. They said David sang the words of this psalm when the Lord delivered him from the hand of not one enemy, but he delivered him from all of his enemies. I like this about our God. You see, because God does a complete work. God didn't just deliver David from some of his enemies. God delivered him from every one of his enemies. I, I used to be in a tizzy at times when I knew that there were so many enemies and don't think because you preach the word of God and you serve people that you don't have enemies. But I'm grateful today that we have a God who knows how to deliver us from all of our enemies. You see, our God is a deliverer. And God, he delivers us from whatever has us bound. And anyone listening to me today, I, I want you to know that if you are in bondage, your bondage is not greater than the power of God. You see, every stronghold of Satan, it can be broken. Every oppression of the devil, it can be broken. Every spirit of addiction, the chains that hold us down, these chains, they can be broken by the power of God. God, he, he's not interested in just delivering us from a few things. God wants to deliver us from everything that has us bound. Our God is a great deliverer. And some of you, you may seem to feel that something has had you bound for so long you can't come out of it. But I've come to tell you today, you can still be free. A woman that had a spirit of infirmity, she was bound together for 18 years. The Lord set this woman free. A woman that had an issue of blood for 12 long years, the Lord set her free. The children of Israel were in bondage for nearly 400 years. The Lord set them free. And I want to tell you today, it doesn't matter how long you've been bound or what may seem to hold you down. The Lord, he is 
a great, he's a mighty deliverer. And whatever got you today is not too big for God. David said these words in Psalm 18, 29, he says, For by you I can run through a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. This one verse is packed with so many things today that I want to unfold because when David said these words, David is saying several things. He simply said, for by you I can run through a troop by my God. I can leap over a wall, but it's more to it than that. What you're saying, David, first of all, David acknowledges the Lord's help. David knew that the things he had accomplished, they were accomplished by the Lord's help. So David, he acknowledges this. Proverbs 3, 6, the Bible says here, it teaches us that we should acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. In all of our ways, we should acknowledge that we need the Lord's help. So when we get ready to undertake a task, when we start out on another day's journey, we need to start that day off by acknowledging, Lord, I need your help. The Bible said that in all of our ways, we need to acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. I, I really don't know about some folk, but I, I do know today that I can't make it without the Lord. Amen. I acknowledge that I need the Lord's help in all that I do. Do you know that we can't think the right thoughts without the help of the Lord? Do you know we can't carry out specific tasks without the help of the Lord? We, we can't make this journey without the help of the Lord. I like what the Apostle Paul said when he talked about laboring more abundantly than they all. Paul said, it's not me, it's not I who labor, but it's the grace of God given unto me. In other words, Paul acknowledges that he couldn't do any of the things that he did apart from the Lord's help. So in, in Proverbs 3, 6, the Bible says that we should acknowledge the Lord. We should acknowledge him before we start trying to do things. But once we've done some things, we need to once again acknowledge the Lord. In Psalm 18, 29, this is what David does. David had run through a troop. David had leaped over a wall. Then David, he takes time out. And he acknowledges God for he understood that it was not by his own power that he did it. But David knows that it is by the power of God. More people who have overcome situations, circumstance, adversity in life. They need to declare, I never would have made it without the Lord. How many of you today can just look at your life and look at all the things you've been through, look at what could have been, and you would just take time to acknowledge God and say that I never could have made it. I never would have made it without the Lord. You see, I'm grateful today. I'm grateful today that I stand here with this opportunity to proclaim the word of God one more time. But as I stand here today, I must declare that I never would have made it had it not been for the help of the Lord. I, 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 I'm grateful that God has done so much for me. But, but I, I shouldn't stand alone today and acknowledging what God has done for me. You as a church family, the St. Paul church family, you are to acknowledge God for what the Lord has done for us. You see, God sustained this church from way back in the 1800s and this church, this ministry has gone through so much. And even we have endured some trying times in the recent past, but we never would have made it had it not been 
for the Lord. And, and I don't think that some of us really realize how much God has done for us. There will be a time when the stories are told how God has opened doors for us. The stories will be told of how God had made impossible things into a reality for us. Stories will be told of how people, they drove up in cars and in vehicles, they stood out in the cold, they endured the elements, and they made it not because of them, but we made it by the power of God. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning, because had it not been for the Lord, had it not been for the Lord, who's on our side, where would we be? And sometimes I'm amazed when I talk to people and they say, y'all still out there, how you making it? I tell you how we make it. We make it because our God is bigger than our circumstances. We made it because power belongs to God. And I give God some praise. And there's some folk who say they wait until they get back in the inside before they start praising God. Not me. I'm going to praise God right now. Why? Because I understand that God's been good to us. And we need to acknowledge the Lord for what the Lord has done in this ministry. We never would have made it apart from the Lord. Some of you have careers that you never would have had if it had not been for the Lord. Yes, God. There are places that some of you occupy, seats that you sit in, that you shouldn't be sitting in those seats. And you wouldn't be sitting in those places had it not been for the Lord. Some of you have reached goals that you never would have achieved had it not been for the Lord. Some of you have gone through situations, overcome circumstances, defy the odds. You made it because of the Lord. And you should realize that you shouldn't look back and feel that you were so astute. You were so talented. You were so gifted that you could do it on your own. No, you made it because of the help that comes from the Lord. So first of all, when we read these words here, we must understand that David acknowledges the Lord. But then secondly, David, he accepts his human limitations. You see, there is great wisdom in accepting our human limitations. You see, when we realize that we are infinite beings, it brings in a reality check. You know, when, when we understand that there are limitations that we have, it brings in some reality checks. I, I, I don't want to ever forget that I am an infinite being. You see, because long as I keep this reality before me, then I always realize that I need some help. People who, don't, uh, who do not understand the fact that we have human limitations, they make assumptions that they can do things by themselves. Someone said to me, as long as you've been preaching, you don't need to study. And I say to them, I need to study more. Why? Because I understand that I can't do this without the Lord. When we understand our own humanity, it brings us to a place where we always depend on God. I don't want to ever stand up to try to preach and depend on myself. I don't want to ever stand up to try to teach and depend on myself. I understand that if it was not for the grace of God and the power of God, there is no way that I can declare the word of God. So, so when we look at these words, David, he understands. David accepts his human limitations. When people feel like 
that they are invincible. They take things in their own hands and forget about God. In Numbers chapter 14, the children of Israel, they were poised to enter into the land of promise. Moses sent out the spies to survey the land and come and bring back a report. Ten of the twelve spies went out and they came back and they brought an evil report. This report caused the people to sin against God. They didn't trust in the Lord. So they had this grand idea that they would go on and they would possess the land. We've come this far. God promised us this land and we've come too far now to turn around. And so they decided that they would go on into the land of promise without God. But then listen what Moses said to them in Numbers 14, 42. Moses said, do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies for the Lord is not with you. You see, the, the, the children of Israel, these men, they thought that they could go without God's help. Moses said, don't do it. But then they went on their own. And the Bible said that they were defeated. They were driven back by the Amalekites and by the Canaanites. They, they, they thought that they could do it without God's help, but they couldn't do it. And I want us to understand today that we can't do anything without the help of the Lord. We can't take matters in our own hands. And when we do, we're met with failure, setback, setback disappointments, and defeats in life. Why? Because we need the help of the Lord. David, in this verse, he accepts his human limitation. He knows that he is an infinite being, but he understands, David understands that he's an infinite being, a finite being, excuse me, but, but he understands that God is infinite. As being an infinite being, God has no limitations. God can do all things. You can't put limitations on God. When, 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 when we uh, as humans understand that God can do what we can't do. When, when, when we as humans understand that power belongs to God. When we as humans understand that we need God. We come to a place where we solely depend on the Lord. God is infinite. God can do all things. And all things with God, as the Bible says, they are possible. We need the help of the Lord. So David, he comes to a place. When you read this verse, David accepts his human limitation. But then finally, David accesses God's help. You see, it's one thing to know that God is our helper. But it's another thing to be able to access help from the Lord. Psalm 46, 1 say, God is our refuge and strength. And it says that God is a very present help in time of trouble. You see, though God is our helper, we need to know how to access the help that we need from the Lord. Our limitations. God's it being an unlimited God means that we ought to reach out to the Lord. David understood this. David didn't have a problem putting his trust in the Lord. Continue to read Psalm 18 verses 2, 2 and 3. Listen to what David said. David said, he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. He said that the Lord is my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust. David said, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And David said, I will call on the Lord who's worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In other words, David understood how to access the very help that he needed from God. David knew that to access the help of God, he had to put his trust in the Lord. David had come to a place that David 
realized that God was special to him. David looks at his own humanity, but then David looks at God's divinity. And David began to say again, he said, the Lord is my rock. David said, the Lord is my fortress. God is my strength. And David said that I'll put my trust in him. David said that the Lord is my shield and he's the horn of my salvation. That God is my stronghold. David said, I'll call on the Lord. Why? Because God is worthy to be praised. And David said, so I shall be saved from my enemy. In other words, we need to access God's help by putting our trust in the Lord. We need to trust in the one who is worthy to be praised. We need to call on the one who is worthy to be praised. We need to acknowledge the one who's worthy to be praised. You see, by his help, we can do amazing things. By his help, we can go through storms and by his help we can make it through the difficult times in life by the help of God we can come through trouble moments by the help of God you see I realize that I've come through so many things by the help of God I've come through sicknesses by the help of God I've come out of misery by the help of God I've come through the darkest points in my life by the help of God, I've dealt with sadness, ups and down trials and tribulation just by the help of God. And I don't know how other people feel about it, but I understand that I can do nothing without the Lord. I say like the psalmist said, not some of my help, but all my help. It comes from the Lord. I lean on him because he's the source of my strength. David said that God, he's my rock and God is my fortress, but God is my strong tower. God, he's everything to me. God is a preacher in me. God is a teacher in me. God, he's the source of my joy. God, he's the source of my peace. God, he's everything to me. And I depend on God's help. If you need somebody today, the help is available. All of our help, it comes from the Lord. Don't look to man because man can't do what God do. Don't put your trust in yourself. You are a creature where you have limitation, but you trust in God. You lean on God, and God will help you do whatever you're dealing with in life. God, he is our helper. Hallelujah. That's what David said. Thank you, God. David said, by God's help. And this message this morning, it resonates because we need the help of God. And that help is available. Whatever we're dealing with in life, God, he's with us. He's a refuge and God is our strength. God is a very present help, even in times of trouble in our lives. We are limited, but our God, he has no limitations. He says, for by you, God, I can run through a troop. By you, God, I can leap over a wall. I can overcome whatever is in my way. Why? Because all of my help, it comes from the Lord. This morning, if you need God's help, I need you to trust him. I need you to trust him with everything that is within you. I need you to trust him. A finite being, I need you to trust him. An infinite God is trustworthy. Will you trust in the Lord? As I got up this morning and heard the news, I know who to look to for help this morning. Do you know who to turn to? Do you know God is with you? God, he wants to be with us. He is with us because he knows that we need him. I need him this morning. Do you need the Lord? Do you need him? What situation are you facing? What obstacle, what challenge, what trouble, what sadness, what trial? 
whatever it may be, by the help of God, we can make it. And I give God praise today for his help. Bless the Lord, I have to say. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, and don't forget about his benefits. God is good to us, and God, he is our help today. I want to extend an invitation to someone, first of all, who's unsaved to come to the Lord. The Lord will save you. If you give your life to him, give your heart to him, trust in him, the Lord will save you. If there are those today who need, who need prayer, I want you to trust God. That's what David said. David said, I trust in the Lord who's worthy to be praised. I want you to trust God. You can't see your way. Trust God. You deal with pain. You're dealing with sadness. I need you to trust God. refuge. He is our strength. God is our helper. If you need prayer today, will you come? If you need prayer today, will you come? I trust God. Hallelujah. I trust God till I die. Hallelujah. I trust him. Trust him when everything don't turn out the way I want it to turn out. I'm still going to trust God. Being a finite creature, I trust God. I trust his infinite wisdom. I trust his absolute power. I trust God. Sometimes Satan he tries to tell us we can't trust God because things didn't turn out the way we expected it to. I deal with, I deal with that, but I trust God. Hallelujah. I stood over my friend as I said last night, and I prayed over my friend. I prayed over my friend for a miracle. And I got here this morning before I came out to preach and I got the news that my friend was gone. But you know what? I still trust God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Next situation I face, I'm going to go in that situation. I'm going to trust God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to look to God for whatever I ask the Lord for because I trust God. My faith in God is not predicated upon whether or not God does it the way that I think he ought to do it. Yes, God. My faith in God is just predicated upon the fact that he's God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And I trust his sovereignty. Thank you, Lord. I don't have Hallelujah. to understand how the Lord works to, to trust God. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I die. Yes, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Will you trust Oh, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. There any particular special prayer requests this morning before we go? Special prayer requests. I was out here yesterday morning and uh, I pulled over I pulled over uh, right there 
shared the road and I was talking to a young lady about fame. And she asked me, she said, do God still work miracles like he did in the Bible day? And I sat right there on the corner and I told her some things that I just said about trusting God. And I told her that God is still a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Thank you, God. I don't know. I don't know what you believe. But I believe God to be a miracle worker. Can I say that I don't believe God to be a miracle worker because what somebody told me. I believe God to be a miracle worker because of what I've seen the Lord do. Amen. Thank you, God. Someone may say, has I never seen a miracle? If you've been born again, you're looking at a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. For it is by God's power that you've been born again, made new. So I've seen God perform miracles spiritually as well as physically. That's God. So I'll trust him. Trust his sovereignty. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Father, we come today trusting you. Yes, God. Facing incredible odds and certain situations. But we trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are finite creatures, but you you infinite God. There is no limitations to your power and what you are able to do. We trust you, Lord. We trust you when we don't understand. We trust you, God, when things don't happen the way we expect them to happen. We trust you. We trust you sometimes when we're shedding tears. We trust you when we're dealing with pain, sorrows, and grief. We trust you, God, when it looks as if the deck is stacked against us. We just trust you, Lord. We trust you because we know that you can see what we can't see and you know what we don't know. We trust you, God. Even when the answer we ask you for is yes, and maybe you say no, we trust you, God. We trust you, God, when we can't see the good in a situation, knowing that the good just simply may be the good as you see fit and the glory that you want to bring forth. We trust you, God. We trust you knowing that you are our helper and knowing that we can't make it apart from you we trust you lord we trust you today god we're here we didn't make it by ourselves it is by your help that we're here this morning we got up out of our bed but it's because you gave us strength we have our right minds today because you enclosed us in our minds. We have the use of our faculties by your help. The provisions that we have, we have them because of your help. And so, Lord, we understand, we acknowledge you as being our source. And Lord, whatever is needed today, we trust you that you're going to provide the help that we need. Lord, I thank you for being the healing help. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you, you healed my body over and over again. 
and I thank you, Lord. Some of your greatest miracles that I've witnessed have been in this place where you healed God, you delivered, you brought about wholeness in lives, you brought people from the brinks of destruction. And Lord, I thank you today. I give you praise. I acknowledge you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to help someone with their peace today. Help someone with their joy. Help someone with their hope and their understanding. Every need this morning, we lift them before you. That you will meet every need according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So much, so much we have to thank you for. Thank you, Lord, for every door that you've opened for this ministry. Thank you for your provisions that you keep on supplying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for sustaining this church in the cold and in the heat, God of people who have been displaced but been under the shadows of the Almighty. I thank you, God, for being our covering. And we bless your name. Father, thank you for another chance to preach. Thank you today, God, for the inspiration from your word. And I give you praise, Lord. I rest in you. I've given your people your message. The message of hope, the message of help. A message, God, to let them know that you will not leave them nor forsake them. And in their difficult times, they can call upon you because you are our helper. We give you praise. And now, Lord, we're ready to leave this place. We leave trusting in you, depending on you. And we ask now, God, that your grace and that you you guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit. We praise you and we thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Everybody just give God some praise today. A God who worthy to be praised. All of our help has come from the Lord. Be blessed, my father's children. May God be with you till we meet again. Amen.